Is there a contradiction between the biblical creation account and the theory of evolution? Let us look at the first book of the Bible. In Genesis, there is not just one, but there are two creation accounts. Number one goes like this. God creates a bunch of things, then the animals, then man, the end. Number two goes like this. God creates a bunch of things, then a man, then the plants and animals of the field were brought. And since penguins, rabbits, mammoths didn't really complete man, God creates another human being, the woman. The end. Hmm, something's not right here. Is there a contradiction between these two accounts? Well, if what the Bible wanted to tell us was how things happened from a biological point of view, then we would indeed have a problem. But that's obviously not what the Bible is doing. Instead, it offers us two theological commentaries on creation. Number one explains the relationship of man to the rest of creation. He is, so to speak, the crown of creation. Number two explains how man and woman stand in regard to each other, that both are of equal value, that they complete each other in a union of love. This is the core message of the biblical narrative. The focus is not on biology. And that is why the Catholic Church doesn't really have a fundamental problem with biological theories, such as evolution. The statements of Pope Pius XII, Pope John Paul II, and Pope Benedict XVI make this clear. However, it is not as if the Church has nothing to say on the origin of man. It quite solemnly teaches that man is a special creation of God. He receives his spiritual soul directly from God. And this isn't a gradual difference from other creatures, but rather a qualitative leap making man a created thing that is capable of friendship with God. Materialistic views of life, which are put forward by some biologists, are rejected. As long as this truth is protected, creation and evolution do not have to be contradictory. Indeed, the believer can understand evolution as the continued creation by God. And this process need not be random and undirected, even though it obeys natural laws and influences. God is the first cause. All other causes have their being and their very power to cause through Him. Everything not only exists because of God, but is directed to Him as to its final end. This is the position of the Church regarding the question of evolution. It safeguards certain revealed truths, but leaves the investigation of natural laws and processes to science. And this scientific endeavor continues to be exciting even today, since although there might be some general theories, we still haven't found all the answers, not by a long shot. For example, let us look at instinctual behavior in animals. It raises a lot of questions concerning the precise laws that govern evolution. Bees, for instance, can communicate the direction and the abundance of a food source through dance. Okay, so it looks a little different, but the thing about dancing is true. How could such a complicated form of communication develop in insects? Conventional models haven't been able to provide all the answers. This doesn't mean that science will not eventually find the answers, but it's certainly not as if we already understood everything. On the contrary, and that's why the exciting search for truth has to continue, along with an openness to being corrected once in a while. <laughs>